Well, now in the following speech, I'll sum up the main arguments of the opposition, which we, which I think are that joy equals quality, holistic life and long-term learning, problems of top-down uh, teacher relationships, uh, respect um, over authority, and creating a bad learning environment. And I also try to take down what I consider as the three main arguments of the government, which is diversity, underlying authority, and quality. So firstly, though, just like I think what a major... Uh, a major thing to rebut at the very start is that the government have made a fundamental misinterpretation of what we say when we think that um, enjoyment should take precedence over authority. We're not saying just as we say that um, we're not saying that there shouldn't be any authority. We're saying that there's a priority. Just as we're not, just as government said that uh, believe that they don't are against all enjoyment. We're not against all authority. We believe that teachers fundamentally exist as a guide. And so there will be an underlying level of authority, because there has to be. So firstly, I think I'll just um, develop one of the main points of the importance, actually, and the benefits of enjoyment. So Joe raised the point of independent learning. And that is the best, the best form of learning. The most important learning takes place outside of a classroom. In a classroom, it's limited time. You can only cover a limited amount of things. It's supposed to be a guide to more learning. And the best learning is critical learning. It's not just rote learning. It's a learning that prepares us for later in life when we have to critically engage in the workplace or in academia. And if students aren't, if students, uh, aren't uh, taking part in an uh, open discourse, which is not really possible whenever there's, um, whenever there's a ultimate authority, which I'll expand on later, if they, they won't be able to engage. Yeah. Sorry, how is not taking place uh, relating to authority? Not taking, not participating. How an authority? You mentioned that correlation. Yeah. Can you explain? Well, I just think that there. Uh, I think that whenever uh, uh, authority is prioritised over engagement, then it creates a different dynamic in classrooms. It means that uh, students aren't peer, aren't uh, partners in their learning. It means it creates a bad environment that the teachers. Um, are put above the students. Teachers are seen as the, the sole authors of the truth. That's not actually outside of and m most disciplines outside of science. There is not one right answer. It's all about um, it's all about multiple views and coming up with a, a balanced view. But I think that if we don't have if we have authority, if we have ultimate authority, then it discourages discourse, which is the ultimate aim of education is actually getting people to express their views and uh, think critically. But just to go on, um, the port the problems of the problems of not engaging outside of the class is that children won't engage with the actual material because it'll just be on a superficial level, which will just lead to lower lower standards um, of education. Um, number two, second point of joy, uh, the importance of joy is that they won't find the area they love. If students aren't allowed to actually enjoy their work, they're they're going to end up not engaging, not finding the area that they love most. So they're going to go on into areas that they don't actually enjoy. They're going, we're going to have unproductive workers doing jobs they don't like. Ultimate like dis dissatisfaction about the economy, lower production, lower economic growth. Um, now going on to the quality of education, we think that um, an important point is that um, one point is that whenever you have a teacher as the sole as the sole authority figure in the classroom, that means that uh, the quality of education is determined by how good the teacher is because the teacher is the sole. Because there's no discourse, because there's less discourse, the teacher is the sole provider of academic content, which increases the chance that if you have a bad teacher, then you'll have a bad education in that subject. But if you make it that students are all uh, contributing to the classroom discussion, you have more variables into what um, into the equation of what is going to be a good education. So it lowers the risk of getting a bad education. Um, also, then just go on to the fact that a, a case addressed by um, brought up by the government. Um, about teachers are aware of students' needs. We say that teacher that there, if you bring an authority, ultimate authority, there'll be poor relations between teachers and students. That means that pupils won't actually develop good relations with teachers. They won't find them approachable, which that means there won't be conversations between pupils and teachers. So teachers actually won't know what the needs of students are because students know what their needs are best. They know what their what's important to them, and they can't be told by. Parents don't always know best, or medical practitioners don't always know what's best. So if teachers don't have good relationships with students, then there's not actually going to be, 
if teachers don't have good relationships with students, then they're not actually going to, they're not going to know what the needs of those students are, which will uh, lower the quality of education. Thirdly, I think um, students can learn as much from each other as they can from the, from the teacher. So we miss out on vital views and we miss out on the diversity that will come from open discourse. Open discourse encourages the free flow of information. Um, and if there's no open discourse, then there's no diversity. Yeah. Recognize that this motion is supposed to be put in place in all schools. So are you really suggesting that six-year-old students know what's best for them and that 15-year-old students who are subjected to peer pressure and like incredibly harsh social environments know what's best for them, not just what they want, what they think is going to be the most fun or the most cool? I think that our I think the opposition has more fun, more of a faith in what in students. We think that there's a difference between respect and authority, and ultimately respect is greater than authority, because we think that if um, a good teacher is able to garner respect and not just authority, they're able to govern through respect and not fear. And we think that um, whenever uh, teachers can act as guides to enjoyment, they're able to introduce a level of respect. They're able to get respect from the students, which is far better than authority, because it's it's views people as equal, it encourages students to, uh, to, uh, to develop ideas of respect for each other. And, um, let's see. For these reasons, this opposition, uh, this opposition encourages you to vote for the opposition.